generations. And now, the power of two restores the one. We got a bidet! Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are talking about the new movie Madam Web. Uh, it's had quite the reception from critics and um, people like us that go to see the movies. Uh, so we're here to tell you, you know, are those ratings on Rotten Tomatoes uh, true or are they, you know, just kind of hating on the film? So we're going to tell you some non-spoiler opinions first, give the movie a rating from each of us, and then we'll talk about spoilers with the movie. Uh, so, I guess I can go ahead and mention that um, I really didn't have any expectations for this movie. One, I didn't really know who Madam Web was. Literally nothing, except for it's probably, you know, somewhere in the Spider-Man universe, because it's Web, and it's Sony. So, Sony has the movie rights to all the different Spider-Man characters, so maybe that's what it was about. Uh, and I believe it is um after seeing the movie and we'll talk about that a little later it did say it was an association with marvel so it's tied to the marvel universe too it's tied to marvel but it's not tied to the marvel cinematic universe mm, okay yeah they're they're two different things it's it gets kind of hairy quite honestly <laughs> um but yeah so i had no expectations i thought the casting was interesting um we had dakota johnson for uh our main lead for madam webb and I forget what her name is the sydney is it sydney sweet sweeney yeah yeah so um sydney sweeney i recognize from uh euphoria so she's been in a very popular show as of late too uh not to mention uh the I would say supporting actor of Dakota Johnson's Madam Webb is also Adam Scott, who plays Ben. Uh, we'll get to his last name a little later because that might have some uh, spoiler stuff going on there for you. Because I didn't know about who he was before we saw the movie, but he might have more significance later on. Uh, so his casting was really good. Uh, I will say the one casting that I thought was a little bit iffy for me was the villain. Uh, the villain was, I probably can't even pronounce it, Tahar Rahim. Tahar Rahim. Uh, I just, something tells me that his character wasn't written very well, Um, just because some of the lines that he had, I feel like even if he delivered them in an amazing way, they probably wouldn't have really hit. Uh, I felt like his villain was kind of bland and, uh, I mean, obviously he wanted to do evil things. Uh, I, I don't know if we understood his motive from the trailer or not, because I never understood any of it. Um, but one thing we do get from the trailer is that he's trying to kill these three girls. And so, I mean, that's pretty much what the motive is the whole movie. Uh, we find out a little bit more about it later mm -hmm. on, of course, but, uh, I he just thought like, he just seemed like kind of a jerk without any charisma. Yeah. So. Again, may have been written poorly, maybe. Maybe it was the acting performance, I don't know. I felt like the females of this movie were great choices. But again, if you don't have the proper writing, then the movie will not flourish. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention about this movie is that there was a good handful of scenes where it just, the editing didn't make quite much sense. Uh, one of them was there is a scene at the diner and we see that in the trailer, at least one of the trailers and they're all at the diner. And basically there is a shot where the diner is absolutely full of people and then something crazy happens. And then it just shows that there's like one person in the diner and it, unless everybody has like cat like reflexes to dip that fast, I don't think that is super possible. So 
Uh, there were some things in there that were kind of non-believable, uh, from my opinion. Uh, I'm going to let Sarah talk about some of her things, too, because I don't want to steal all the things that we talked about on the way home. Uh, yeah, one of the, while you're talking about editing and whatnot, one of the scenes of the spider, the CGI of it, it just looked so cartoony. It didn't look very realistic, and I felt like I got better towards the middle slash end of the film. Not that you see it like a whole ton throughout, you know, there's just some glimpses of it here and there. But at least our first interaction with it, I'm like, this just looks like a cartoon, and it looked ridiculous. Um, so I thought that was an interesting way to kind of kick the film off with some very bad CGI. It looked a uh, lot like the flash. Yeah. Um, Dakota not- Johnson, I, I like her, uh, but I felt like a lot of her lines seemed kind of awkward. Um, and her supporting troop of girls or like the three girls that are around her. I wasn't really a fan of any of them. Uh, the one was kind of bratty. The other one was way too shy, like to an ultimate extreme where she seemed really quiet and shut down, but like not in a believable way, more like in a stereotypical kind of way. And then the third one was okay, but just bland at best. Um, I, I didn't really like any of them, to be honest. Uh, and I feel like that's, probably a mix between the writing and the acting. And I'm not saying that they're bad actresses, but like there, there wasn't a very good cohesive uh, relationship between the, all four girls in the main group. Um, And I know part of it's kind of strangers becoming friends and all that stuff, but I don't know. It just, it it didn't vibe well. Well, I'd also add on to that. Like uh, for instance, I really like, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. I've watched other things, like other Marvel animated things that had Iron Man in it, and I didn't really actually care for Iron Man in those things. So, like, it part of it is the acting, because, you know, if if you're doing a great job and, you know, creating, like you talked about with the villain with the charisma, if you're creating, you know, something that people will really enjoy, like Robert Downey Jr. did with Iron Man, I think that it would have made it a little more enjoyable. Maybe they, I mean, to be honest, the the movie, I don't know if there's anything that was like behind the scenes, but there were just, there's things about the movie that didn't quite make sense as to the choices that they made. Um, I really don't want to give away spoilers, so uh, we're going to have to hold on to that. Um, was there anything else that you didn't really care for? Or what your opinion was in general? Maybe there were some good things? Uh, I liked hearing a Britney Spears song mixed in there, but there were some other times where the music kind of seemed random and out of place. Uh, the action, when there was some, was interesting to watch, but I wish that there was a lot more. I felt like we spent so much time on character development for Cassie, the main girl, right, that we didn't really have enough time for her to become like the true superhero that she is. It felt like more of like a backstory and I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm used to today's storytelling where like they're already a superhero and then later a prequel comes out showing their backstory. So to start with the backstory, it didn't seem super strong. It, it kind of, I don't know. It it didn't uh, it didn't pique my interest as much as I think if she would have been like super awesome to start off with. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Well, I think what's like kind of going along with what you're saying. What's interesting is that you know she really doesn't. This might be spoiler, so I'm sorry, people. Um, but she never really comes into her own with her powers until the very end. And so, like, if you think about the Spider-Man films. Like the the Tobey Maguire one. So he, you know, gets his powers and he figures out how to do everything. And he's decently fluent with it, with it probably by the 30 to 35 percent mark of the movie. And then we get to enjoy him and his powers the rest of the way. So with this movie, like you said, there's a lot of character development because we never really actually get her to fall into her character, so to speak. So maybe that they were trying to bank on, you know, a future installment, which I really don't know if the box office is going to say, hey, we want another one of these. Unless they're just trying to connect it to other 
Spider-Man films, which again, we'll talk about that a little later. Yeah. One thing I thought was kind of interesting is they definitely got some money from Pepsi and probably Calvin Klein behind me here um, mm -hmm. because there was so many like cans of Pepsi that were around. One of the big backdrops for one of the scenes was Pepsi, like the huge sign. So like a Pepsi factory or warehouse. Yeah. So definitely had some stuff going on there. Um, yep. All right. Let's jump into our ratings. So. I I don't think this was an average film. I don't think it was above average. Uh, it, if you definitely put it up against other superhero movies, it falls very, very short of what I think your expectations would be. Um, so like if we were comparing against other superhero movies, I'd probably go somewhere around a two. But if we're talking about this movie on its own and we're not trying to compare it to other things... I'd probably give it an, an extra point, like a three, um, just because it is functional, but it doesn't really get to the point. We're kind of doing the same thing the whole film. And unfortunately, I think there was some bad writing in here, uh, which made, I mean, my favorite part of all of these films are typically the villains. And I really didn't care about this villain who looks like he showed up in a cosplay outfit. So not, not to say that cosplay outfits are bad, but Sony should have put some money into it, per se. Yeah, there were some other costume designs that were pretty poor, too. Um, so you said why your rating is what it is, but what is your rating? Oh, I said it was a three. Okay. Well, I, you were talking about a two and then maybe a three, and so I wasn't sure what you actually landed on. Yeah, um, I was saying if we're comparing this against other superhero films, I'd probably say it's like a two, but... If we're trying to look at it on its own, my I'd probably say about a three. Yeah, I I was really trying to determine. I was bouncing between a three and a four, and I think I'm landing at a three. And here's why: is there was a lot of really cringy, awkward humor where it was like an attempt at humor, but it just wasn't funny. It wasn't landing um, with weird, awkward situations. And the other part of it is kind of what you mentioned about reliving certain things. So like we see in the trailer, the subway scene where she sees the guy say something and then she realizes that uh, our villain is trying to kill the girls or to get to the girls. Right. And so she kind of sees that ahead of time and then she does what she can to fix it. We have that type of a situation over and over and over and over and over. And it's a bit much. It's at some point you're like, okay, learn lady, learn, <laughs> figure out how to do something different because we can't just keep reliving scene after scene after scene. I will so, say though, I, 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 I kind of felt like I, I almost liked how clueless she was because I was so clueless with how her powers were working. Like I almost felt like it, it was a proper setup just because we were kind of like right there with the character not knowing, but... It was realistic, but not entertaining. Right. I, in my opinion. Right. All right, so I we both gave it a three. So uh, we will transition to spoilers. Sarah is going to cover this movie for us. So what do we got? And let's kind of talk about some of these points as we go, too. Yeah, so we start out with... Uh, our main character, Cassie, whose last name... Oh, no, I'm sorry. We don't start out with her. We start out with her mom. Uh, so her mom is in the Peruvian jungle. She's looking for this spider. She's got, like, a bodyguard or somebody there to protect her, who is Ezekiel. Uh, she is super pregnant, uh, has no business being in the jungle that pregnant, far away from hospitals and whatnot. Uh at least by choice, you know, she's a, she's a researcher, a scientist. She knows better than that. Um, but anyway, uh, so she winds up finding the spider, her bodyguard, Ezekiel takes it from her by force because he's got a gun. He does wind up shooting her. And so he wants it for selfish reasons, whereas she knows that the spider has like some sort of special powers that could like basically cure hundreds of diseases. He just wants it for himself because he wants to have superpowers, right? So he takes it. 
she is dying from her gunshot wound and she's also super pregnant and these spider people las arañas which means spiders in spanish these spider people las arañas they they show up to uh kind of take her and they are in some really bad costumes like it just looks ridiculous it's not that they're covered in spider webs it's like they painted their bodies red because they're actual skin and hair right and then they're in this like hot glue painted black webbing that's that's about the best i can describe it is it looks like if you used hot glue on a sheet of wax paper and look painted a web out of hot glue and then wrapped it around someone's body to kind of form it to them it just it looks really strange it doesn't look feasible as a suit it doesn't make sense for their bodies to be painted red uh, what, what do they paint themselves every day? You know, like it just it just seems so weird. Not to mention yeah. th one of the, this is one of the first things that kind of made me go, oh, uh oh, you know, is this movie going to be bad? Was uh, so when they pick her up and they're taking her back to wherever they live, like this sacred water or whatever that they're taking her to um, the CGI that they use for them to run through the trees and stuff. I'm sorry, Sony, but it looked better in Tarzan from Disney when he was going through the trees. I mean, that was awful. That was 2D animation compared to 3D animation. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I said what I yeah, said. It, it wasn't very good. Um, and I guess now's as good a time as any to bring up, and I should have brought this up in the non-spoilers. They use so many spinning shots, like where they're watching a character and the camera pans around them to show either what's behind them or what's in front of them or what they're looking at. They use those kind of spinning shots over and over and over throughout the whole film. And it's really not for any purpose. Like a lot of times when you do that, it's because you're wanting to see what's behind the car that's chasing them or oh my gosh, they saw something scary and you're trying to figure out what they're looking at. But in this film, there's no real purpose to it. They just keep doing it, I think, to uh, maybe to spin you like how a spider spins a web. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm reaching there, but I don't know what other purpose it could have. Um, but yeah, so they save her uh, temporarily. A spider bites her so that she can basically stay alive enough to go through childbirth and then she dies, right? So then the baby, Cassie, is born. Uh, the guy swears to protect her or at least watch over her when she uh, comes back looking for answers. And that's where that scene kind of ends, right? So now we fast forward. That was 1973. Now we're in 2003, so 30 years later, uh, following Cassie, who is an ambulance driver slash paramedic, uh, with her friend Ben, uh, who I know him from Parks and Rec, so I was kind of excited to see him because I didn't remember from the trailers that he was part of it. So that was kind of a, a neat uh, cameo for me. Uh, but yeah, so there's lots of banter back and forth. This is where she kind of almost runs into uh, one of her other side girl characters with the ambulance. And we see the other two at some point during the film uh, for diff various different reasons that she's running into these people very randomly. Uh, you get that from the trailer. We have a couple instances where she's seeing th things ahead of time. And so what kind of triggered that was that she was trying to save somebody out of a car that was flipped over on the side of the bridge. The guy gets saved, but she's stuck in the car somehow and falls into the water and was apparently knocked out for three minutes before Ben was able to pull her out and save her. And so she has some weird like existential phenomena going on where she's kind of, I'm going to call it in the spider realm, right? Or the web realm. And she's seeing all these different flashes of different memories. Some are from the future, some of her from, from the past and doesn't really know how to, how to deal with any of this. Right. But this is kind of like insinuating that this death experience is what's triggering her powers. Um, so kind of going from there, we've got a lot of her seeing the future, right? At one point she's at a baby shower and, uh, a balloon randomly pops and then they ask her some questions and she has to relive through that twice because 
of the powers of her trying to see the future. And so she's like, she doesn't understand what's happening. Right. So this type of phenomena of seeing this, having that deja vu happens to her several times until finally she's on the train scene and she's saving the girls and uh, is kind of starting to learn how to use it to her advantage. Like she wants to take them a certain way to get out of the subway, but she notices the police and has a flash of her uh, getting arrested. So she thinks that's a bad idea uh, because she doesn't want to get arrested. Right. And this is when um, our spider guy, Ezekiel kind of comes in and we're realizing like, Oh my gosh, there's actual danger going on. Um, So kind of most of the rest of the film is kind of like a cat and mouse chase, right? He's got some sort of uh, super computer that can sink into all the different cameras throughout the city, like the traffic lights, the ATM cameras, those kinds of things. So he's tracking down the girls, trying to find them. And the girls don't know that he has that, but knows that he's trying to hunt them down, right? So they're trying to lay low. Uh, we get the scene in the diner because they were hung the girls were hungry and uh, didn't realize, I guess, what kind of danger that could bring. Uh, and of course, Dakota, or excuse me, Cassie, is able to save them from that. Um, over and over, they keep having these near-death experiences and she keeps being able to save them like just in the nick of time because she can see what's going on. Uh, she has the girls stay with her friend Ben for a week so she can go back to Peru to try to figure out what's going on with her past and her future, right? She gets some glimpses of when she's there. She's able to get some glimpses of her mom and kind of what she was like uh, because, again, she died during childbirth. Um, she's able to find out this whole time she's kind of hated her mom for why would you risk your pregnancy to go in the jungle researching spiders? And then she finds out it's because when she, the mom was pregnant, she knew that the baby, Cassie, had some sort of weird uh, disease that was very degenerative that would not allow her to have a normal life. So the mom wanting to research these spiders to try to see if she could save her kid from having a miserable life. Um, so it's kind of like a little heartfelt moment of like, oh my gosh, my mom actually loved me. She wasn't just some jerk that only cared about her research, right? Uh, so where do we go from here? Ben's sister, um, whose husband is overseas doing work, I believe, so Ben's sister is super pregnant. She's the one who was having the baby shower earlier in the film. Her water breaks. She has to go to the hospital. What doesn't make sense to me is that they know the girls are trying to stay low. I don't know why he didn't have the girls just stay home. But for whatever reason, they all pile in the car together to go to the hospital. This is when Cassie is like just getting back from to the States and she finds them all missing and is wondering what the heck's going on. Uh, and she sees a puddle of water on the floor and I guess instantly understands that that meant that the girl's water broke and that they're going to the hospital. Even though she didn't get any flashes of the future, she automatically knows that's what the pile of water on the floor means, I guess. Uh, the paramedics show up to take the pregnant sister to the hospital, but they had already left. So Cassie steals the ambulance so that she can have the ability to drive through red lights and whatnot to try to hunt them down to save them. Because uh, she gets a vision of Ezekiel, spider guy, villain, uh, killing them in the car, right? So... Then we kind of, we get some kind of cheesy, kind of cool combat, I guess, a little bit. I don't, it's a stretch, but it's kind of about as good as it gets for this film. Uh, between her running an ambulance through that Calvin Klein billboard or uh, building that Jeremy's got in the background of his video there. Uh, so she runs the ambulance through that to be able to hit Spider Guy head on. Uh, she takes the girls in the ambulance 
to try to get them away from the pregnant sister. That way she can actually get to the hospital and have her baby. So I guess I'm going to focus on them for just a half second because the rest of it kind of deals with the girls, right? So later in the film, we see that the baby's fine and she has, so she has the baby and stuff and that's all good and fine and dandy. Uh, and uh, Jeremy, what's uh, what's our significance with the other films? Yeah, so when they're talking about the baby that's being born, so we, we've we heard a couple of the first names throughout the film, but we really haven't heard any last names because if they said the last name, we'd probably all fixate on that a little bit more. Um, but they mentioned that Ben is going to have a fun time being an uncle. And so, you know, that chimes to us, Uncle Ben, which connects to Spider-Man. And uh, actually, when I got home, I looked up the cast listing and Parker is attached to their last names. I didn't pick up them saying Parker at all in the films, but we do have Ben Parker, which is going to be Uncle Ben. And then we have Mary Parker, who is Peter Parker's mom. Very nice. And also, Ben mentions that he has some... the woman that he's interested in dating or he has been dating for a while and that's probably going to be aunt may i would bet you're right because they specifically did not say her name he was being very right. coy about it and part of the baby shower games was trying to guess the name of the baby and they got called into work before they actually announced what the baby's name was going to be so us as the audience never got to find out Right. But we also there's one other thing that I didn't pick up until I looked up some names. Um, one of the girls at the baby shower said, is the name going to be Richard? And she goes, Richard wishes it was Richard. Richard is um, the husband. Which is Peter Parker's yes. dad. OK, I didn't know it was Peter Parker's dad, but they were they were asking, is it going to be Richard Jr.? Right. And she said Richard wishes because they were insinuating that was her husband. I think they had said that earlier in the film too, about her husband, Richard being away. Right. Yep. But yeah, so that's kind of how they get away and move on with things. Now let's focus on Cassie and the three girls. And then our villain is Ezekiel and kind of how that wraps up. So Cassie knows from earlier in the film that this, I'm going to call it a Pepsi warehouse, even though it's not Pepsi in the warehouse. Pepsi is the name on the building as the billboard, right? So in this Pepsi warehouse, it's a deteriorating building that's full of explosives and fight and uh, flammable things where they had a very bad flammable explosive accident earlier in the film. And somehow all the explosives must not have gone off, gone off because the building is still full of even more explosives that are still live despite being doused by all of the firefighters water earlier in the film. So very weird, very convenient for them. But uh, I guess just kind of glaze over that fact and accept it for what it is. It's a deteriorating building full of explosives. It's Again, another, it's another great way to get Pepsi in there. <laughs> yep. Team Pepsi. So, uh, so the girls are like, well, it isn't that dangerous, you know, like what if we get trapped inside while the ex explosives are going off? And she goes, well, it's only dangerous if you're trapped in there. So we're trying to get the bad guy trapped in there. Right. And she kind of has some flashes of the future and is able, she, she hasn't perfected her craft yet. So she's trying to do things to help them like call helicopter for help because she can see them getting out in a helicopter but then at the same time, one of the explosives goes off and hits the helicopter. So it wasn't a perfect scenario. Um, this is kind of another scene where there's some, I, there's an opportunity for a lot of really good action, but it's all very cliche, very uh, choreographed and not super fun to watch because it's so slow-mo like, Watch out, you're going to get hit here. Let me pull you aside. Duck down there so you don't get hit by that firework. Um, oh. You know what I mean? Like, it just, I mean, it was so forced. It didn't even make it fun. Well, that was the first time that we actually got to see her use her powers for real, for real. Because that's what they were talking about at the, like, the Peru place. He was like, you know, you can 
be in multiple places at once. And it was showing that she can, you know, make a web of herself essentially uh, in all these different places at one time. And that's how she was saving the three different girls. But then she gets punched. She has to come back to her regular self. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she's able to do that the one time. Right. And uh, she using her visions is able to actually trap and defeat the villain. He gets stuck underneath uh, a bunch of falling debris from the Pepsi sign. Yeah. The uh, S from Pepsi. He, huh? He got stuck under the S in Pepsi. I thought it was the P because his head was in the center. Oh, was it the P? Um, I thought so. But uh, anyway, she falls into the water and one of the girls is able to help bring her up. This was another one of those really cheesy moments, in my opinion, was she had taught the girls earlier in the film how to do CPR. And it was kind of a, a cringy not super great acting moment it just it seemed not very natural from what had been going on but because she had taught them earlier in the film how to do cpr when they pulled her out of the water they magically knew how to do cpr and keep the same rhythm and if you get tired swap out and all this stuff and so they're able to do it perfectly and help her bring her back to life uh but when she when she was in the water she got hit. It looked like she got hit by one of the fireworks mm -hmm. in the head. Right in the face. But it only affected her eyes. It only blinded her eyes. It did. It looked like it hit her, but she didn't have any scars. She didn't have any wounds. She wasn't bleeding at all. Uh, she didn't have any hair missing. There was no sign of her actually physically being hit aside from her eyes being glazed over and kind of like blind, like, uh, the clouded, clouded over. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I thought was super weird because it looked like she got hit with an explosive and yet there's nothing like showing any kind of damage on her actual face or bot on her head. Uh, and again, that was in her head. So what we see later after she's, finished healing up at the hospital is that she is wearing uh, these shields so she is officially blind and she's in a wheelchair like a full blown electric wheelchair and that visor looked like they got it from Dollar Tree it looked horrible I, when I saw the comic versions of it I was like how how did you do this to her <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so she's got this weird cheap looking visor she is apparently paralyzed but nothing from that accident made it look like she was based on the fact that all we saw was that she got hit in the head but there was no actual damage aside from her being blinded it just it doesn't line up it doesn't make sense um and this is i guess it just ties in with the rest of the film it feels like it was half a thought Right. And they didn't they didn't finish the thought to make it actually be tied together. Right. But our our very last kind of ending thing is them saying, can you see our future? And she talks about how amazing they'll be because they look they look like this. Right. They're fighting crime. Uh, if you look at my background here. So we had had glimpses of them earlier in the film because the bad guy had glimpses of them trying to take his spider. That's why he wanted them dead. But we never actually got to see them get any powers or wear the suits. Madam Webb herself or Cassie, she never wore a suit. Um, the only one that did wear a special Spidey suit, right, was Ezekiel and Las Arañas, the spider people of Peru. And so it just... Uh, Jeremy, I know we share some thoughts here. I'm going to I'm going to take a break here. I'll let you uh, kind of explain what's going on with uh, what we're thinking about. that. Well, I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong. Did we did you did you talk about what his motive is, like why he's doing what he's doing and trying to kill them? Uh, just now I did. I kind of forgot to mention that at the beginning. So our villain is trying to kill these three because he's having these visions as he is dreaming and sleeping that these three girls are going to eventually kill him. So he's going to become this super 
uh, like a powerful being and he's going to be taken down by these three girls in 10 years. And so his idea is, well, if I kill them while they're young, well, then they'll never be able to kill me in the future. And so we, we're dealing with that whole situation. And so because that is the way it is, we never get to see any of these three girls in their like superhero outfits or their powers, nothing. So when you watch the trailer and you see these girls, you know, in the suits that's behind Sarah and they're doing things, mind you, those are only visions. They never look like that in real time. So uh, not even, like you said, not even Madam Web really looks like a superhero. Uh, it's just that she has a nice jacket, a very nice jacket. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about the 10 year thing and that that's he was seeing that vision of 10 years in the future. Um, yeah. Yep. Did I cover what you thought I was going to say? I feel like I yeah. did. Oh, no, you, you, you did. I was wanting to reference their suits and how we don't really see them in them. Uh, and that's yeah. It's really weird, too, because like I was I was hoping to see some of that, but we never did. So maybe we have to wait for another one or, uh, you know, I kind of wonder if this is in the same. We didn't really get any indicator of what universe this is part of. So my guess is it's part of the Venom universe because that's what they're currently working with. But it could be technically any of the other ones, but just because, well, it's probably not attached to the Tom Holland spider-man just because that's an mcu for the most part but it could be attached to toby mcguire or andrew garfield and we really don't know if they are even part of the venom universe so i feel like it's probably not them and the reason being is that this took place in 2003 so if the baby's born in 2003 then those films would have to be in like the 2020s or somewhere in there, you know, because he's like a teenager slash uh, young adult. And I feel like those weren't meant to be sent. Uh, we're not meant to be set in that era. Possibly. I have no idea. I think that's another reason why, you know, people are hating on this movie is because we really don't have a clear idea of what the, what the heck's going on here, you know? Um, all we have to go by is this is Madam Webb and this is all you need to care about. And except for that small carrot at the end about Peter Parker. So and you have to process that it's Peter Parker. They don't go, it's Peter. Well, and I mean, Venom's kind of the same way where it's a standalone film that doesn't have to necessarily do with Spider-Man. But it's presented pretty much right away what's going on and you know dealing with the powers and stuff like that whereas she doesn't get her powers until pretty much the end or she doesn't figure it out until the end and i get that that's realistic to your point earlier you know about how it would take us quite a bit of time to figure it out but when you're thinking about ent entertainment and stuff i don't care about that i want to know what she does with it i want to see some cool action you know it's supposed to be a superhero film i want to see her kick butt Right. And we also like so what they could have done is they could have gotten to the point a little quicker and then shown us a little bit of, you know, when she's learning, what does she learn, you know, with her powers? That's a bad thing to do. Like maybe she tries to prevent something and ends up causing another issue. Like I think the closest thing that we had with that is that she saw the future and then she didn't tell the person and then they were killed. And so then later on, she saw a vision about a bird smacking her window and dying. And so she opened the window and noticed that she could save a life. And so that was kind of the flip of all that stuff. So I guess the the negligence that she did was not telling people. So now her superpower is I have to tell people. Well, she had tried to tell that guy. She just wasn't forceful enough about it. I didn't understand how like what. Granted, I've never been in a car accident like this happened, but so the car, the ambulance is going, you know, and then there's a truck that hits it on the side. Yeah, so he got T-boned, but it was at the front of the truck. So basically the driver door got hit. 
So my question is, why is he bleeding so much from his chest? Uh, because like she's trying to give him CPR yeah. and she gets blood all over her hands. I was thinking like, man, I mean, he didn't get stabbed by a pole. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if his ribs cracked in a funny way that caused the bleeding to be like that or something. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of odd. Like, huh? Interesting. But that's kind of the whole movie. Huh? Interesting. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. But yeah, so that's our thoughts on the new Madam Web movie. Uh, again, we both gave it threes. So it's definitely not your uh, up to par Marvel films as of late. Maybe it'll go somewhere. Who knows? I kind of want it to because they took a whole movie to set all this stuff up. And I, like I said, I feel like the casting of the women um, could really go somewhere. They have a leader. It's a very well-established actress in Hollywood. They have a couple of others that are, you know, up and coming and like really coming into their own as of late in Hollywood. So I think it would be great to see them part of the uh, Marvel Universe moving forward. But again, we're going to need writers and we're going to need directors that know what they're doing. Uh, and please give us a villain next time where either the writers give him better charisma or the actor can inject some too because uh, I really didn't care about this villain and I wish I could have. Um, but if you enjoyed this type of video, make sure to turn on notifications and subscribe to the channel. That way you are notified when more of our movie discussions drop. We do these all the time. We guarantee at least two a month, but uh, we try to do more because we love going to the movies. Uh, drop us a like if you like the video and drop us a comment letting us know your thoughts on Madam Web. And if there's any other weird things in the movie that we didn't mention, let us know because I'm sure there's tons of them. And then as always, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.